video provides some information with reference to what I found when propagating my Astralis hive using the induction method. The vertical split Astralis box is generally a smaller hive in size to the TC and TH hive. The hive dimensions are 220mm long, 160 high and wide, and it's made out of 20mm thick pine. I started the induction in April 2020. I used plastic coated brood support bars and plastic coated gutter guard. This gives the bees something to build on as they go. The initial position of the main hive and the adduction hive was on top of some Besser block pavers. I'm not sure this is a good thing as the blocks and pavers tend to hold moisture. Two black irrigation pipe fittings were screwed into a block of wood to join the two hives together. I also drilled a hole in one side of the pipe to let the bees loose when needed, but as I found, this was not needed. The final resting position of one of the hives would be in an ornamental log hive that I made. I wanted to have the ability to propagate the hive again later on down the track. Now this is the log hive with the hive in place. You can also see the stainless steel rods with nuts either end to hold the log together after splitting it from top to bottom with a handsaw. The first spot that I chose for the log was too shady. I actually did the split in winter. Um, I should have waited till summer. The log hive's final resting place was outside the front window under shade cover for both winter and summer sun. When I did the split, the brood ball was not equal in both hives. I believe the queen stayed with the hive, so I narrowed this down with the propolis around the entry part. Now initially the bees went mad building pollen and honey stores in the new hive. I also learnt from various sources that this is what they do and they don't start building brood for some time. You can see in this part of the video where the brood is and the stores from the second box. They also quickly build a new defence entry in the second box, which was originally the back half and this was of the storage box that I started with. This shot shows what I think is the queen Queenless Hive and the original defence structure they had built in the front storage box. In this original hive, I added thin gal wire mesh instead of the plastic gutter guard you saw earlier. Now at this point I can say this project originally started as an AA eduction, but after hearing that the process would take much, much longer than I thought for this species, I decided to actually do a split and the second front box had a mile of pollen in. I had also heard that AAs go well with brood lifts, so to me, a split was even better than a brood lift. The split went well. I used fishing line to saw and cut the brood, so the spillage of either pollen or honey was down. Forager bees returned to both boxes and I closed them up for the night. The strong split hive was left in the original position and the weaker split hive was placed in the fake log. Now, as I said, AAs are different bees in how they go about their business. The hive in the original 
position had bees curiously going in and out while the fake hive had very little activity except to venture up to the entry tube to clean it out and build their wax fortress at night as you can see from these shots. With hindsight I should have waited a little longer for the summer heat to start as they struggled in the cold weather. On most days they huddled around the brood to keep it warm and slowed up to a stop at night. The hive I thought had the queen had forager movement but the hive I thought queenless to date has had little movement. It's now August 2020. This is the first of two videos. I will do a follow-up of what happens after August 2020. I'll detail the progress of both uh, good and bad aspects from August in the second video. Cheers for now.